Hallelujah. Amen. We're going straight to the word of God and uh, with the title Father to the Fatherless. Somo la leo kicho kinasema baba kwa yatima. Father to the fatherless. Baba kwa yatima. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the heading of today is about God the Father. Na neno la leo ni, ni kuhusu Mungu Baba. I was meditating yesterday about the attributes and who is the God the Father. Nilikuwa najaribu kutafakari siku ya jana sifa za Mungu Baba. And I was asking God what am I going to share tomorrow? Nikana muuliza Mungu ni nini nitaenda kushiriki kesho? And he said go and talk about me. Na akaniambia nenda kaongelee kuhusu mimi. Go and talk about me as the Father. Niongelee mimi kama Baba. Go and talk about me as the Father. Niongelee mimi kama Baba. And I want everybody to create a picture of a father of this world. Na nataka kila mtu atengeneze picha ya Baba huyu wa ulimwengu. Any father whom you know. Baba yule unayemfahamu. How does he look like? Yukoje? I know we all have our fathers. Najua wote tuna baba. Either they've been called back home, but once we had fathers. Inawezekana wameshatwaliwa lakini tuliwahi kuwa na baba. A father is somebody who is in charge. Baba ni kiongozi. A father is somebody who is respected in a family or clan. Baba ni yule anayeheshimika katika familia ama uko. When you speak of a father you speak of authority. Unapomwongelea baba unaongelea mamlaka. It is somebody who carries the name. Ni yule ambaye anabeba jina. You can be a male but not a father. Unaweza ukawa mwanaume lakini sio baba. There is a difference of being a father. Kuna tofauti ya kuwa baba. The word father carries responsibility. Baba inabeba majukumu. Many times was reading the Bible in the New Testament. Mara nyingi nimekuwa nikisoma Biblia katika agano jipya. Many situation when Jesus was doing his things, he referred to Father. Mara nyingi Bwana Yesu alipokuwa akifanya kazi yake duniani alikuwa akimsema baba. When he prayed for fish and bread. Alipokuwa akiomba mkate. He lifted them up and said, "Father, I thank you." Alinyanyua juu na kusema baba na kushukuru. And many time he said if you abide in my words me and my father will come and stay inside you. Na wakati mwingine akasema nyenye mkikaa ndani yangu mimi na baba yangu tutakuja tutakaa ndani yako. And then the Lord talked to me yesterday. Sasa baba akasema nami jana. And I meditated I meditated it until morning. Nikao naitafakari mpaka asubuhi ya leo. And he said I am God the Father. Akasema mimi ni Mungu baba. Tell my children that I am God the Father. Mimi ni Mungu baba. I can only be the father Ninaweza kuwa baba to those who can they, they want to position me as their father. Kwa wale wote ambao nataka wananipa mimi nafasi kama baba yao. There are many people are Christians but they don't regard God as the father. Kuna wengi ni wakristo lakini hawamchukulii Mungu kama baba yao. Father is somebody whom in anything you run to him. Baba ni mtu yule ambaye katika jambo lolote unaweza kumkimbilia. Jesus was always running to Father. Bwana Yesu alikuwa wakati wote akimkimbilia Baba. The Bible tells us sometimes he went the whole night to pray. Wakati mwingine anasema alienda akakaa usiku kucha. After the meeting he went uh, to pray. Baada ya mkutano alienda kuomba. He was speaking to his father. Alikuwa akiongea na baba yake. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Those who wants to call him a father. Wale wote wanaotaka kumuita yeye. There are those who have forsaken their their lives for him. Ni wale wanaotaka kumuita baba ni wale ambao wameyatoa maisha yao kwa jina. And he said clearly, those who are calling me father, they are those who have forsaken their lives for me. Na amesema wazi katika neno lake, wanaoniita baba ni wale ambao wameacha maisha yao kwa ajili yangu. And he said they are the ones who have stopped depending on this world. Na ni wale ambao wameacha kuitegemea dunia hii. Their dependence is totally on me. Mategemeo yao ni asilimia mia kwangu. It is totally immersed in God. Ni ya yote anategemea mimi. They have my word. Wana neno langu. My word is inside them. Neno langu liko ndani yao. This is clearly What the Lord spoke to me. Hili ndilo ambalo Bwana amesema wazi nami. And he started by giving the book of John chapter 15 verse 7. Na kaanza kisema kwa ku kuongelea The book of John chapter 15 verse 7. Kitabu cha Yohana sura ya 15 mstari wa 7. We thank God for his goodness. Tunamshukuru Mungu kwa wema wake. 
It wasn't easy for me to stand here today. Haikuwa rahisi mimi kusimama hapa siku. Every time I want to preach but I I saw it was so difficult. Kila wakati nikitaka kusimama nilikuwa naona But because of how the father is. Lakini kwa sababu ya baba. I am speaking here now. The Bible says if you abide in me and my words abide in you you shall ask what you will and that shall be done to you. Anasema ninyi mkikanda ni yangu na maneno yangu yakikanda ni yenu ombeni mtakalo lote nanyi mtatendeka. And verse 8 says here here in is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so that ye may be my, dis- my disciples. Na msalwa nani anasema hivyo hutukuzwa baba yangu kwa vile mzaavyo sana nanyi mtakuwa wanafunzi wangu. Jesus is saying that his words should be inside you. Bwana Yesu anasema kwamba neno langu nalikae ndani yenu. So that his father may be glorified. Ili kwamba baba yangu apate kutukuzwa. Every time he is referring to his father to be glorified. Wakati wote alikuwa akitaka baba yake atukuzwe. And every time if you want God to be seen in your life, you must glorify him in whatsoever you are doing. Na kila wakati katika maisha yako na wewe unapotaka Mungu atu Mungu atukuzwe katika maisha yako. Create the environment of knowing that you have the father. Tengeneza mazingira ya kuonyesha kwamba una baba. Remember when you were a child. Ukumbuke ukiwa mdogo. Even when other children were disturbing you. Hata wakati mwingine watoto wengine wakikusumbua. You would say that I'll go and tell my father. Nitae ulikuwa ukisema nitaenda kumwambia baba. From now you have grown up and, and know that you have the real father who created you. Sasa umekuwa mkubwa ujue kwamba una baba ambaye yeye ndiye aliyekuumba. If you depended much on that father of this world. Ukitegemea sana kwa baba yule huyu mwili. How much more if you decide to depend on the father of fathers? Je, sasa una ni, ni zaidi sana kwa kumtegemea Mungu ambaye ni baba wa baba. I remember the story of somebody called Enoch. Ninakumbuka habari ya Enoch. The Bible says when Enoch got at 65 years of age Enoch alipokuwa na miaka 65. He got a son called Methuselah. Alipata mtoto ambaye alikuwa Methuselah. And then Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Na Enoch alitembea na Mungu kwa miaka 300. And God took him because Na Mungu akamchukua. And he was no more. Na hakuepo tena. But one of the stories about Enoch. Lakini habari uh, historia moja wapo ya Enoch. Which is not in the Bible. Ambayo haipo kwenye Biblia. Enoch had a son who resembled to him a lot. Enoko alikuwa na mtoto ambaye alifanana naye sana. And that son depended on his father a lot. Na huyo mtoto alimtegemea yeye sana. And then Enoch said if this child can depend on me this much. Enoko akasema hii kama kama huyo mtoto anaweza kategemea akanitegemea mimi sana. How much if I choose to depend on my father also? Yes, si zaidi sana na mimi nikiamua kumtegemea. And the Bible Baba. says Enoch walked for 300 years with God. Na Biblia inasema Enoko alitembea miaka 300 na Mungu. In other words that Enoch for 300 years he was resting. Kwa maneno mengine miaka 300 Enoko alikuwa amepumzika. He just rested because when you are having a father the father will be in charge of everything. Maana yake ni kwamba alikuwa akimtegemea baba kwa hiyo alipumzika. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu. You want a real rest in your life. Unataka pumziko la kweli katika maisha yako. You need God the Father. Unamhitaji Mungu Baba. Even when Jesus was being killed. Hata Bwana Yesu alipokuwa kiuawa. And then Jesus said. Na Yesu akasema. Father forgive them. Baba wasamee. Because they don't know what they are doing. Kwa sababu hawajui wanapenda. Family is Father who forgives. Familia ni Baba ndiye anayesamea. Never underestimate Father. Usimdhalau Baba. Depend on him. Ntegemee. By reading in the book of Psalms chapter 68 verse 5. Kusoma katika kitabu cha Zaburi sura ya 68 verse 5. I'm going to read for you quickly. Ntawasomea. I'm just creating a foundation of where we're going. Zaburi 68 mstari wa The Bible says, a father of the fatherless, a defender of widows is God in his holy habitation. Baba wa yatima na mwamuzi wa wajane, Mungu katika 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 <laughs> katika kao lake takatifu it is until ni mpaka pale you live utaishi like a fatherless kama yatima that is when you may realize how god is the father ndipo utakapotambua mungu ni baba god is not after double standard people mungu hayupo kwa watu wenye michanganyo he doesn't hate your father Hamchuki baba yako. Your physical father. Baba yako. But when you put trust on him and 
not your real father Na, that's when you can see god as your father lakini pale unapoweka matumaini yako kwa baba ya baba ba mungu baba it is until i know it is difficult to you ni mpaka pale utakapoweka tumaini lako many people when they read this bible verse a father of the fathers wengi wakisoma mistari hii kwamba baba wa yatima it is until you forsake your father ni mpaka pale utakapomwacha baba yako wa mwili forsake your mother for him kumwacha mama yako kwa there was a time they went to call jesus and say your mother and your brethren are calling you kuna wakati walimwambia bwana yesu ndugu zako na mama yako wanakuita and jesus said these are my brethren yesu akamwambia hawa ndio ndugu these are my fathers and my mothers hawa ndio baba zangu na mama zangu it is until when you position god above everything that is when he's becoming your father ni mpaka pale utakapompa mungu nafasi ya kwanza ndipo pale utakapompa when you trust god for your provision then he will provide as the father ni mpaka pale utakapomwamini Mungu kwa ajili ya mahitaji yako ndipo atakapokupatia kama baba yako. Ni mpaka pale utakaposimama pasipo kuwa na mawazo tofauti ndipo atakapokupata baba yako. Ni mpaka pale ambapo hutakuwa na wazo lingine tofauti juu yake. You just believe in him. Na kumwamini tu. You, you just focus on him. Una, unamwangalia yeye tu. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach na Abednego. They were told today is your day you are going to be killed. Wali, waliambiwa hii ndio siku yenu mnaenda kufa. They said we know how capable our father is. Tunajua kwa jinsi Mungu wetu alivyokuwa na uwezo. Even if he is going to let us die. Hata akituacha tufe. No problem. Hamna shida. But we know he is able to help us. Lakini tunajua anaweza kutokoa. Anaweza kutokoa. Never had a second thought. Hawakuwa na mawazo mabaya. They never had a second opinion. Hawakuwa na mawazo mabaya. They just believed on him alone. Walimwamini yeye. They just focused on him alone. Walimwangalia yeye. Oh my father my father. Oh baba yangu baba yangu. I am just depending on you. I know in that day that you have said. Ninajua katika ile siku leo wewe. My husband will come. Mume wangu. My wife will come. My house will come. Ma, what you prepared for me Kilo will be there only that focus on him mtegemee only focus on him muangalie yeye peke yake you are looking for peace unatafuta amani it is him iko ndani yake who said yeye ndo aliyesema now the lord of peace sasa mungu wa amani give you peace na akupe amani always siku zote by all means katika namna yoyote the bible it is the book Biblia ni kitabu. It is the the promise of God. Ni ahadi za Mungu. It is God who is making an oath. Ni Mungu ndiye anaweka ahadi. An oath ni kiapo not ahadi. Anaweka kiapo. God is swearing. Mungu anaapa. Now. N- n- sasa. I. Mimi. Jehovah. Jehovah. will give you peace nitakupa amani always siku zote by all means kwa namna yoyote why most of time you are lacking peace kwa nini wakati wote unakosa why he has promised to give you peace wakati always wakati yeye ameahidi kukupa amani you may read in the zote. second book of the Thessalonians chapter 3 verse unaweza kusoma wa Thessalonike wa pili sura ya 3 mstari wa 36 verse 16 mstari wa 16 it is verse 16 wa Thessalonike wa pili sura ya 3 mstari wa 36 Biblia inasema sasa bwana wa amani. Give you peace. Awape amani. Always. Siku zote. By all means. Kwa namna yoyote. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The peace which the Father is giving you. Amani anayokupa Mungu. It is not the same as other peace. Ni tofauti na amani. Many people yoyote. may take advantage of you. Watu wote wanaweza kat- Because of what you have told them. Wanaweza kok- <laughs> Kukuchukulia kwa wepesi na labda ni lugha laini. Because of what? Yaani wakakuchukulia. Au wakakudhalau. Because of what you have told them. Kwa vile ambacho wewe umesema. But go to your father. Lakini nenda kwa Let your father be your confident. Mwache Mungu awe ujasiri wako. You have a father. Una baba. Do you know that song? I have a father who will never ever leave me. Una ufahamu ile wimbo anasema nina baba yangu ambaye hataniacha. The Bible is a keeping Oath of God. Ni kiapo cha Mungu. Biblia ni kiapo cha Mungu. I will never leave you neither forsake you. Sitakuacha wala kupunguza. I will be with you until the end of the world. Nitakuwa na wewe mpaka mwisho. Your father's word is final. Neno la baba yako ndilo la mwisho. Your father's word is final. Neno la baba yako ndilo la mwisho. If he said he will lift you up. Akisema nitakuinua. Live like somebody who is is lifted already. 
Amen. Ishi kama mtu ambaye unategemea kuinuli. Choose to trust him. Amua kumtegemea. Just focus on him. Muangalie yeye. Physical you may not see him. Katika ile kimwili unaweza usione. But I can assure you. Lakini naomba nikuhakishie. Your father is there with you. Baba yako yuko pamoja na wewe. Start smelling him. Anza kumnusa. Start creating through your image his presence. Anza kutengeneza picha kwamba yuko pamoja na wewe. God created you and gave you the power to create through your mind. Mungu amekuumba wewe na kukupa uwezo wa kutengeneza vitu katika ufahamu wako. Whatsoever you are creating in your mind Chot- is real before the Lord. Chochote unachotengeneza katika ufahamu wako ni hadithi That is why the Bible says As the man thinketh so he is Kama mwanadamu anavyojifikiria nafsi yake ndivyo alivyo In the 10 commandments Na katika amri 10 God forbids about rust and fornication Mungu amekataza tamaa But when Jesus came Lakini Bwana Yesu alipokuja He said even thinking about a woman you've already slept with Hata ukimtafakari na kumfikiria binadamu It means by by thinking you are creating kwa sababu kwa kufikiri unatengeneza. And to God something you have created is real. Na kwa Mungu kitu ulichofikiria umeshakitengeneza. So you may close your eyes and kwa create God beside you. Kwa hiyo unaweza ukafunga macho na, kuta, na kutengeneza kwamba baba yako wa mbinguni yuko pamoja na wewe. And by doing that it is real he is with you. Na kwa kufanya hivyo ni halisi yuko pamoja I was kneeling here at 5 today in the morning here. Nilikuwa nimepiga magoti hapa asubuhi. And I felt his presence behind me. Na nikafisikia uwepo wake nyuma yangu. It is so safe when you have him. Ni ama, ni salama unapokuwa naye. The moment you don't feel him is not there. Ukiona haumsikii ayupo. Because as you are thinking so you are you are becoming. Vile unavyofikiria ndivyo ilivyo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just close all doors except him. Funga milango yote. I remember there was this childish story which we had when we were children. Nakumbuka kuna hadithi ya kitoto ambao tulikuwa tumeisikia tukiwa watu. There was a person with a 24 rooms house. Ni mtu kuna mtu alikuwa na nyumba ya vyumba 24. And then he received Jesus. Na akampokea bwana Yesu. And he said, "Father, you can take care of this one room." Na akasema, "Baba, unaweza ukachukua chumba." This is your room. Hiki chumba chako. Welcome. Karibu. And then after sometimes amda, his things were stolen vitu vyake vilibiwa except that room which he said Jesus this is yours isipokuwa vitu vivyo kwa kwenye kile chumba later he said okay take a half me half baadaye akasema chukua nusu na mimi nusu and then those 12 were okay except these 12 others were not okay vika salama vile vyumba nusu 12 na vile nusu 12 until when he, he realized baka pale alipotambua and he said now take everything aliposema chukua kila kitu now the enemy was not able to touch him because Lipo everything was surrendered to god adui hakuweza kumgusa kwa sababu kila kitu amemwachia mungu that is the type of things of life we should live hayo ndio maisha tunayotakiwa tuishi many people we are double we are double minded we have double opinion watu wengi tuna mawazo mawili mawili you know god said you should help by yourself unajua mungu amesema ujisaidie help yourself and then i will help you jisaidie na mimi nitakusaidia how many of you have heard that word wangapi wamelisikia hilo neno and devil has been cheating us that thing that it, it is from the bible na shetani amekuwa kidanganya watu kwamba hiyo neno liko kwa biblia now in the bible where by the bible says help yourself and then i will help you hakuna sehemu kwenye biblia imesema jisaidie na mimi nitakusaidia but everybody in this world even if you go to chinese people they understand this word that it is from the bible lakini watu wengi wanaelewa hili neno liko kwenye biblia it is not there Halipo. You have nothing to do than depending on him. Hauna cha kufanya zaidi ya kumtegemea. Just give everything to him. Vyote mpatie yeye. You are not only living for Christ. Hauishi tu kwa ajili ya Kristo. As your father. Kama baba. But you must be ready even to lose for him. Lakini uwe tayari hata kupoteza kwa ajili yake. You must be ready even to die for him. Uwe tayari hata kufa kwa ajili yake. Because sometimes when you are passing through fire it is when he's creating you to be gold. Na wakati mwingine unapopitia moto ndipo anapokutengeneza uwe dhahabu. That's why Paul said to live is Christ and to die is profit to me. No maana mtume Paulo akasema kuishi kwangu ni faida. Kuishi ni Kristo na kufa ni faida. He never cared about his life. There was a prophet called Agabus. Kuna prof, uh, Agabus. He went and prophesied to Paul. 
And he said this person is going to be persecuted and in a way which is going. Akasema huyu mtu uko anakwenda ataenda kuteswa. Paul said Paulo akasema I am not only ready to be persecuted but also to die. Akasema tu siko tayari kuteswa lakini hata kufa pia. Why because he focused. He knew his father. He knew where he will go. Kwa sababu alikuwa anajua ni wapi anakokwenda. Sometimes bad things happen to our lives because God want to create a better future in us. Pengine mambo mabaya yanatokea katika maisha yetu kwa sababu Mungu anataka tengeneze vitu vizuri. A better testimony for you. Ushuhuda mzuri kwa jina. I remember that story I've been telling you always of good luck bad luck who knows. Nakumbuka nimewahi kuambia habari ya Good luck bad luck who knows. Kwa Kiswahili sasa. Bahati mbaya bahati nzuri nani anajua. There was that person with a sheep kuna huyo mtu alikuwa na kondoo. He had beautiful horses. Alikuwa na farasi nzuri. Those horses were beautiful like no other. Alikuwa na farasi wazuri sana. And many people were praising him for those horses. Na watu wengi walikuwa kimsifia kwa ajili ya wale farasi. And once they were praising him. Na wakiwa wanamsifia. And this person was just answering them. Na huyo mtu alikuwa akiwajibu. Good luck bad luck who knows. Bahati nzuri bahati mbaya nani anajua. And one day those horses uh, were stolen they went in the wilderness. Kuna siku wale farasi walibiwa wakaenda nyikani. They got lost by themselves. Wakapotea. And everybody went to say oh sorry you know you have lost your your horses. Watu wengi wakaenda wakamwambia pole sana umepoteza farasi wako. And he said good luck bad luck who knows. Akawaambia bahati nzuri bahati mbaya ni nani anajua. After like one year or two. Baada ya mwaka mmoja. Those horses returned home. Wale farasi walirudi nyumbani. And while they were in the wilderness they met with different speech of animals. Na walipokuwa wametoka kule nyikani walikuwa wamekutana na wanyama aina tofauti. So they had beautiful beautiful small horses, beautiful horses they were double the number. Kwa hiyo wakawa ni wakaza walipokuwa wameenda huko nyikani waliporudi walikuwa wamezaliana na wakawa kuna farasi wengine wazuri zaidi. So they were more beautiful. Wakawa wazuri zaidi. That breed was so good. Yaani wale waliozaliwa baadaye walikuwa ni And people zaidi. started congratulating him again. Watu wakaanza kumsifia tena. Those who said sorry they were now congratulating him. Wale waliokuwa wanamuzunikia wakaanza kumsifia tena. And then he said good luck bad luck who knows. Akasema bahati nzuri bahati mbaya. And one day his son was on top of one horse. Na siku moja mtoto wake alikuwa juu ya farasi mmoja. And then he fell down and he broke his leg. Alianguka akavunjika mguu. And people said you know these new horses are very fast that's why your son has broken his, lo- his leg. Watu wakasema unajua wa farasi wanaenda kasi sana ndio maana wamemwangusha mtoto wako. And then he said good luck bad luck who knows. Akasema bahati nzuri bahati mbaya nani anajua. He never lost focus. He said good luck bad luck who knows. Akupoteza mtazamo wake alisema bahati nzuri bahati mbaya nani anajua. After few time there was war all youth people were being taken to war. Kuna siku ukawa na vita na vijana wote wakachukuliwa. Except his son. Isipokuwa mtoto wake. Because he fractured his leg. Kwa sababu mguu wake umevunjika. And those children they went to fight war there and they were killed. Watu watoto walioenda kupigana vita waliuawa. And everybody was now congratulating him. Oh, your son remained that's why he didn't die. Congratulations. <laughs> Watu wakaanza kumsifia wakasema mtoto wake akwenda ndio maana amepona. And he said good luck bad luck who knows. Akasema bahati nzuri bahati mbaya. Why he was saying that? Kwani alisema hivi? Because he had his focus. Kwa sababu alikuwa na mtazamo. And this person was not having a focus to God. Huyu mtu alikuwa na mtazamo kwa How much more? Lakini je si zaidi When you're passing to all of your issues you focus to the father. Unapokuwa unapitia magumu na mtazamo wako wote ukawa kwa You focus to the father for protection. Unapomwangalia baba kwa ajili ya ulinzi wako. You focus to the father as your parent. Unamwangalia baba kama mzazi wako. You focus to the father for your blessings. Unamwangalia baba kwa ajili ya baraka zako. You focus to the father for the love. Unamwangalia baba wako kwa ajili ya upendo. The Bible says God is love. Biblia inasema Mungu ni upendo. We all know that God is love. Wote tunajua Mungu ni upendo. If the God is love, kama Mungu ni upendo. It means you can get love from him. Unaweza kupata upendo kutoka kwa Mungu. I know men and women they all say we are all men are the same. Najua wanawake wengi wanasemaga wanaume wote ni sawa. Oh, you can't have a man who cannot cheat. Uwezo kwa na mwanaume ambaye But I can tell you. Asemu aliyemwaminifu. We have a father who will never cheat you. Lakini tuna baba ambaye huadanganya. Always. Siku zote. Whatsoever he is said for you it will be chochote asemacho kitakuwa you can talk to him unaweza kuongea naye 
and you can do all the things on his behalf as you are the child of the father na unaweza ukafanya vitu vingi kwa niaba yake kama wewe whenever you be walking if you, you are appreciating wherever you are it will be like him walking with you popote unapotembea na kumsifia maana yake ni kama yeye anatembea ndani yako i think you don't know the benefits of being a father of having a father aujui faida za kuwa na baba a child can enter into father's bedroom Baba mtoto anaweza kaingia kwenye chumba cha babake. A child knows what is in father's bedroom. Mtoto anaweza akajua nini kiko chumbani kwa babake. There are talks which you cannot talk in the lounge but you can talk in the bedroom. Kuna maongezi mengine uwezo kaongea sebleni lakini utaongea chumbani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes a child is not begging from father. Sangine mtoto haombi kwa haombi kwa baba. You just enter in, into bedroom. Ataingia chumbani. You find apple you eat. Atakuta apple mezani utachukua utakula. We not even say father I want apple. Hautasema hata baba naomba apple. Because kwa sababu the child is free to the father. Mtoto yuko huru kwa babake. That's why the things which have, have maybe poison or what you must put away from children. Ndio maana vitu vile vya sumu hainatakiwa uweke mbali na watu. All the things which a child can reach it means they are free to use it. Vitu vyote ambavyo mtoto anavifikia maana yake viko yuko huru kuvitumia. And when you forsake your father. Mpaka baba utakapomwacha baba yako. Of this world. Ulimwengu huu. There are people who are depending on their job more than God. Kuna watu ambao wanategemea kazi zao zaidi ya baba. Husband is being feared more than God. Mume anaogopa kuliko Mungu. Oh, my husband. Oh, mume wangu. I don't know what my husband will say. Sidi mume wangu atasema nini? But never in a day. Lakini hakuna siku. Which you are late from church and you said I don't know what my father will say. Hamna siku ambayo umechelewa kanisa na ukasema sio baba. And when you have that mindset. Mpaka pale utakuwa na huo ufahamu. That I don't want to disappoint my father kwamba sitaki ni mkwaze baba yangu I have appointment with him at 9 Nina nina ahadi yake saa 3 I'll be there 5 minutes before 9 Nitakuwa hapo pale mapema Because he's the most highly father Kwa sababu yeye ni mkuu mno Hallelujah Bwana Yesu asifiwe We should treat our God as the father Lazima tum tumchukulie Mungu wetu kama baba Family there is no father who is happy when his children are dormant they are not growing Hakuna baba anayefurahia watoto wake wasipokuwa. Can you imagine since Tuti got born remained the same way. Unaweza kufikiria kama Tuti toka amezaliwa na angekuwa bado ni mtoto vile vile mpaka leo. Uh, every, every minute. <laughs> mpaka leo analia nga. Family our father expect us to grow. Baba anatutegemea tukue. Expect us to do things on his behalf. Anategemea tufanye vitu kwa niaba yake. Expect us to perform things o- on his behalf. Anategemea tufanye vitu kwa niaba yake. That's why Peter said clearly. Ndio maana Petro anasema wazi. In the first book of Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Katika waraka wa kwanza wa Petro. Chapter 2 verse 2. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Sura ya pili mstari wa pili. The Bible says Biblia inasema As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the world that you may grow you may grow thereby Kama watoto wachanga waliozaliwa sasa yatamanini maziwa ya akili yasiogoshiwa ili kwa hayo mpate kukulia wokovu It means God wants us to grow Inamaanisha Mungu anataka tu There is a period God will give you milk. Kuna wakati Mungu atakupa maziwa. That is when you are saved you say God give me money he will give you money. Wa ndio wakati ule ambao utasema baba naomba hela atakupa fedha. And there will be a time God will give you fish. Na kuna wakati ambao baba atakupa samaki. It means you have grown up. Maana yake umekua. And after giving you fish. Na atakapokupa samaki. You don't swallow the bones. Au umezi mifupa. You must take out the bones. Lazima utoe mifupa. Because you have grown up. Kwa sababu umekua. Father expect you to do more things. He's not giving you fish to harm you. Baba anataka uwe na ukue. Ukue. And he knows you've grown up. 
Na anajua kwamba umekua. He no longer gives you milk, he is giving you fish. Akupi tena maziwa anakupa samaki. But inside fish there is bones. Lakini katika samaki kuna mifupa. You will find challenges in your place of work. Utakuta challenge, una changamoto katika sehemu yako ya kazi. You will find challenge when you come to church. Utakuja utakuta kuna changamoto unapokuja kanisani. You will find challenges as you are walking everywhere. Utakuta kuna changamoto popote unapotembea. But just know you are supposed to grow more than those challenges. Lakini ujue unatakiwa ukue zaidi ya hizo changamoto. You are supposed to depend on your father on everything. Inatakiwa mtegemee baba wako katika kila jambo. But I know God has given me this fish. Ninajua baba amenipa huyu samaki. Not to destroy me. Si kuniumiza. But to make me better. Lakini kunifanya niwe bora zaidi. The steak, nitakula nyama and I will leave the bones away. Na nitaacha mifupa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must live Lazima uishi like a fatherless kama yatima for him to be a father ili yeye awe baba yako you must live like the one who is a beggar lazima uishi kama mwombaji who is depending on him alone yeye anetegemea anemtegemea Mungu peke yake that's when he, he can provide for you ndipo atakapokuku your father is your second keeper baba yako ni msiri wako msiri wako you can count on him Unaweza kumtegemea. Many time we've been seeking for help from men. Mara nyingi tumetegemea msaada kwa wanadamu. Why father is just looking at you? Wakati baba anakuangalia. She was supposed to ask me. Alitakiwa niulize. Look at her now. Muangalie hana. She's asking to people who are, are not even giving her what I expected. Alikuwa akiwaangalia watu ambao walikuwa hata hawakuweza kumpa kile hicho kwa anategemea. Whenever Jesus wanted anything he referred to father. Popote bwana Yesu alipokuwa alikuwa akimtumainia bwana. He said when you pray say this. Alisema unapoomba sema hivi. Our father who art in heaven. Baba yetu uliye mbinguni. Hallowed be thy name. Jina lako litukuzwe. He started mentioning his father. Alianza kwa kumtaja baba. Go in the book of Mark chapter 6 verse 46. Nenda kwenye Marko 646. Sura ya 6 mstari wa 46. Also look one look 612. Luka 6:12 Luke 22 verse 45 Luka 22:45 But also the book of Matthew chapter 14 verse 23 Ah uh, Matthew chapter 14 verse 23 14:23 Jesus always depended on his father Yesu alimtegemea baba yake Always after the uzo. after the meeting he went to talk to his father siku zote baada ya mkutano alienda kuongea na baba yake every day jesus was giving a report to his father siku zote yesu alikuwa akitoa ripoti kwa baba yake that's why the book of john he said ndio maana katika kitabu cha yohana anasema i only do what my father instructs me to do ninafanya yale ambayo baba ananiagiza nifanye Can you imagine how much more will you be if you be doing only what your father have instructed Ibu you to do? Even unaweza ukafikiri kama na wewe ungekuwa unafanya tu vile ambavyo baba amekuagiza ufanye. Most of our times we have went astray because we have never done something uh, uh, directed by the Lord. Mara nyingi tumekosea kwa sababu tumekuwa tukifanya vitu ambavyo hatujaambiwa na baba tufanye. Jesus was always going before the Father. Siku zote Yesu alikuwa akienda kwa baba. You, you, you can read the book of, of Luke chapter 6 verse 12 quickly. Soma Luka sura ya 6 mstari wa 12. The book chapter of Luke chapter 6 verse 12 the Bible says. Luka 6:12. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night prayer to God. Ikawa siku zile aliondoka akaenda mlimani ili kuomba akakesha usiku kucha katika kumomba Mungu. He went to pray to the father the whole night. Alienda kumomba Mungu usiku kucha. Luke chapter 22 verse 45. Luka 22:25. 45:22:45. The Bible says he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples he found them sleeping from sorrow. Biblia inasema alipoondoka katika kuomba kwake akawajia wanafunzi wake akawakuta wamekaa. He rose up from prayer because he left them he went somewhere to pray to talk to his father. Aliwaacha akaenda kuomba. The book of Mark chapter 6 verse 46. Marko 6:46. Marko 6:46. The Bible says And when he had sent them away he departed he departed to the mountain to pray. Hata alipokwisha kuwaagana nao akaenda zake mlimani kuomba. But also in the book of Matthew chapter 14 verse 23. Matthew Matthew 14 verse 
The Bible says and when he had sent the multitudes away he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Naye alipokwisha kuaga makutano alipanda mlimani faragani kwenda kuomba. Na jioni was always going to his father to pray. Bwana Yesu alikuwa siku zote akienda kwa babake. The first day he said. Siku ya kwanza alisema. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Roho wa Bwana yu juu yangu. Because he has anointed me to preach the news. Kwa sababu amenipaka mafuta kuhubiri habari njema. So it means it was the son with the Holy Spirit on top of him. Kwa hiyo ilikuwa ni ni mwana ambaye ana roho mtakatifu. So as he was going to pray it means he was going to pray to the father who remained. Kwa hiyo alikuwa siku zote akienda kuomba kwa baba. Apart from his holiness, yet he saw there was importance of him going to father. Pamoja na utakatifu wake wote aliona bado kuna umuhimu kwenda kwa baba. Come on somebody say Lord give me grace. Sama sema baba naomba unipe neema. Give me grace. Naomba neema. To know the importance of God the Father. Kujua umuhimu wa Mungu Baba. Come on somebody Lord give me grace. Sema baba ninaomba neema. To know the importance of God the Father. Kujua umuhimu wa Mungu Baba. He was going always to his father. Alikuwa siku zote akienda kwa baba. And the first thing he could do to his father. Na kitu alichokuwa akiweza kufanya kwa baba yake. He was worshiping him. Alikuwa akimwabudu. He was glorifying him. Alikuwa akimsifu. Using the book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 12, there are seven words how you can worship God. Ukisoma katika kitabu cha Ufunuo 7:12 Sura ya saba mstari wa 12. There is a way you can worship God. Kuna maneno pale ambayo unaweza kuyatumia kumwabudu Mungu. That God you deserve glory. Unastahili utukufu. Mighty. Unastahili power. Gubo. Blessings. Thanksgiving. Baraka. You glorify God. Shukrani. But he was also giving his father the report. Lakini pia alikuwa akimpa babake report. Father yesterday. Kwamba baba jana you sent me. Ulinituma. And I met one to attend na nikakutana na fulani muda fulani and then i prayed for him or her as you told me na nikamwombea kama ulivyoniambia and then the father would say i am pleased with you my son na baba atasema nime nime nimefurahishwa nawe mwanangu tomorrow kesho at 10 o'clock in the morning asubuhi you will meet one person who has been injured utakutana na mtu fulani ambaye ameumia his heart is full injured moyo wake umeumia Lay your hands to that person. Mweke mikono. That's why Jesus said, I only do what my father instruct me to do. Ndio maana Bwana Yesu alisema nafanya vile tu ambavyo baba ameniagiza kufanya. Our life has been so difficult. Maisha yetu yamekuwa magumu sana. So difficult. Magumu sana. So difficult. Magumu sana. Why our life have, have been so difficult? Kwa nini maisha yetu yamekuwa ni magumu? Because we have never depended on the Father. Kwa sababu hatujawayo tukimtumia. We have been mungu. doing the things by ourselves. Tumekuwa tukifanya mambo yetu wenyewe. I wish if I could have a seminar for two or three days. Natamani ningekuwa na seminar siku mbili au tatu. So that I may teach you how to hear from the Lord. Ili nikufundishe namna ya kumsikia. How you can see from the spiritual realm. Ama namna gani unaweza kuona katika ulimwengu wa. If you have time on Wednesday we will learn about that. Tukiwa na muda Jumatano tutajifunza. And when you allow me you can continue on Thursday. Tena tunaweza tukaendelea Alhamis. And finish on Friday. Na kumaliza Ijumaa. And making sure that while we are reaching the Friday. Tunapofika Ijumaa you'll be able to hear the voice of the lord you'll be able to see from the spirit you'll be able to see angels you'll be able to know the names of the angels who are protecting you uweze kujua majina ya malaika wanaokulinda and then it won't be difficult for you to say i only do what my father instructs me to do siwe ngumu kwako kusema kwamba ninafanya tu vile ambavyo baba amenijalia many people you know nowadays they say hey, How can you hear God? Wengi wanauliza siku hizi namna gani unaweza kumsikia Bwana? There is a way how you can hear God from the Bible. Kuna namna ya kuweza kumsikia Mungu kutoka kwenye Biblia. If you want to learn about that come from Wednesday. Uje Jumatano. We'll start here almost at 6, 6 to 7 every day. Tutaanza kuanzia saa 12. I will teach you clearly. Nitawafundisha. You'll ask your questions. Na utauliza maswali. And you'll be able to know from the spirit. Na utaweza kujua kutoka katika Mungu. You'll be able to walk with God. Utaweza kutembea na Mungu. It will be easy to do and depend on the Father. Itawez, itawezekana kufanya na kumtegemea Mungu. Our Father is so much caring. He is full of love. 
The Bible says he is always faithful. Biblia inasema ni mwaminifu siku zote. He is your refuge. Yeye ni kimbilio lako. He is your keeper. Yeye ndio mlinzi wako. He is your revenger. Yeye ndiye who is who can revenge for you? Anaweza kukulipia kisasi. The book of or Exodus chapter 14 verse 14. Kutoka sura 14 mstari wa 14. Remain quiet and then I'll fight for you. Tu, tu, uh, tulia nami nitakupigania. He said today you are going to see the glory of God you shall remain quiet and I will fight for you Anasema leo tulia utaenda kuona wokovu wa Bwana utakakimia no nami nitakupigania No one can teach you better than the way father can teach you Hakuna anayeweza kukufundisha vizuri zaidi ya Mungu Baba No one can raise you better Hakuna anayeweza kukulea na kukutunza zaidi ya Baba And no one can even punish you better the way na the father can punish Na hakuna kukuadhibu vizuri kama Baba Our father can also punish you better Baba anaweza kukuadhibu The Bible says Lord chastises those who he loves. Mungu huadhibu wale anaowapenda. Sometimes when you are being chastised by God. Saingine unapoadhibiwa na Mungu. Don't complain. Usilalamike. Because he loves you. Kwa sababu Everything from him is holy. Kila kitu kutoka kwake ni kitakatifu. No wickedness in him. Hakuna uovu ndani yake. The Bible says in the first book of John chapter 4 verse 17. First John chapter 4 verse 17. Yohana wa kwanza msula ya 4 mstari wa As he is. Kama alivyo. So are we in this world. Na sisi God expects us to exercise his power in this world. Mungu anategemea tu tu tutembee na nguvu katika ulimwengu. He expects us to rule this world. Anategemea sisi tutawale ulimwengu. He expects us to control this world. Anategemea sisi tutawale ulimwengu. Every day you have been complaining. Kila siku tunalalamika. But God is waiting for you to do on his behalf. Lakini Baba anakusubiri utende wewe kwa niaba yake. Because he has that capacity of giving you that power. Kwa sababu ana huo uwezo wa kukupa hizo nguvu. He is the father to the fatherless. Yeye ndiye baba kwa yeye. Until when you are living like a fatherless, you can know him as a father. Mpaka pale utakapoishi kama yatima ndipo utakapomjua kama baba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is delighted to protect the weak. Anafurahia kuwalinda wale wenye utu. He is after the people who are called the disadvantaged ones. Yuko yuko kwa ajili ya wale watu ambao wanadharaulika. He is for the people who are lonely. Kwa wale watu ambao ni wa It is until when there is a gap in you you can know him as your love. Pale kunapokuwa na upweke na udhaifu ndani yako ndipo utakapomjua kama yeye ni upendo. Lord, empty me. Baba ingia ndani yako. Empty me. Ni uh, nitoa. Fill me of your love. Anijaze upendo wako. Fill me of your love. Nijaze upendo. Your love is everlasting. Ni upendo wako ni wa milele. He is everything good. He is yeye ni kila kitu kizuri. He is everything good. Ni kila kitu kizuri. There is no wickedness in him. Hakuna uovu ndani yake. He is so love. Yeye ni upendo. For God so loved the world. Kwa maana baba aliupenda ulimwengu. And he gave us his only son. Na akamtoa mwana wake wa pekee. That whosoever believes in him. Kwa kila yote amwaminie. Should not perish but have eternal life. Asipotee bali awe na It is God's plan for you to have the eternal life. Ni ni upango wa Mungu wewe uwe na. It is the plan of the Father for you to be saved. Ni plani ya Mungu wewe uokolewe. He said in heaven one day. Alisema mbinguni siku moja. Whom shall I send? Ni mtume nani? To save the world. Uokolewe. And then Jesus say here I am. Na Yesu akasema. Send me. Nitume mimi. It was because of his love kwa sababu ya upendo wake because of his love kwa sababu ya upendo he sent somebody to rescue us tuma mtu aje tuokoe we sinned against him we disappointed him but yet because his love lakini kwa sababu ni upendo and he said no 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 i, I can't destroy them alisema siwezi kuangamiza i cannot destroy them siwezi kuangamiza that is why ndio maana when you see to the plan of the lord is not to destroy us mpango wa Mungu si kutuangamiza when you choose to return into his way ukiamua kurudi njia yake ukiamua kurudi katika njia yake he sent noah alimtuma noah he sent jonah alimtuma yona in the ninawi country katika mji wa ninawi that i am going to destroy that that city in 40 days alisema nitaenda kuangamiza ule mji but those people repented lakini wale watu walitubu and he did not destroyed them. Na hakuangamiza. Jonah was complaining. Yona alilalamika. Why you didn't? Kwa nini ukuangamiza? Son, I am love. 
akasema mimi ni upendo I set a judgment not because I want to punish them Nilisema niliweka hukumu si kwa ajili ya kuangamiza Since they have repented Lakini kwa vile wametubu I will not destroy them Sitawaangamiza I don't know what has been the sin to you Sijui ni nini imekuwa ni dhambi kwako The moment you repent on him Utakapokuwa umetubu He is ready to forgive Yuko tayari kukusana. He is ready to lift you up. Yuko tayari kukusana. He is ready to trust you again. Yuko tayari kukusana. He is ready to give you his love. Yuko tayari kukusana. He is ready to walk with you. Yuko tayari kutembea na wewe. We can see Enoch started to walk with God at the age of 65. Tunaona Enoch alianza kutembea na Mungu akiwa na miaka 65. It means you are not that old to fail to walk with God. Inamaanisha wewe hujazeeka kutembea. Family you can walk with God. Unaweza kutembea na Mungu. You can depend on him. Unaweza kutembea. And he can be man to your life as the father. He spent time with Moses. And then Moses was shining. Everybody was not able even to look at Moses. Family, if you want good skin, spend time with the Lord. Good skin. Don't go, don't go to buy cream. Spend time with him. Kana Mungu. The Bible says in Kiswahili. Biblia inasema kwa Kiswahili. Habari njema hunenepesha mifupa in the book of Proverbs. Nimeshatafsiriwa. Even your bones can be refreshed. Manake hata mifupa yako inaweza ikaponywa kwa neno lake. You find somebody is weak. Unamuona mtu mdhaifu. Because he is lacking good news. Amepungukiwa na habari njema. Spend time reading the Bible. Tumia muda kusoma neno. Spend time focusing on the Father. Tumia muda kumwangalia. He is your Father. Ndiye baba yako. He will never leave you. Hawezi kukuacha. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12 and 13. Yohana chapter 1 verse 12 and 13. Sura ya kwanza verse 12 and 13. Sura ya 12 mstari wa 13. John chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 mama. Yohana 1 mstari wa 12 na 13. Yohana moja Those who received him Bali watu wale mpokea Bali watu wale mpokea He gave them power to be the children of God Aliwafanya kuwa wana wa Mungu Only what you need is just to receive him Unachohitaji ni kumpokea Only to receive him Ni kumpokea tu Oh father from today I receive you as my father Kwamba baba kwanza leo nakupokea wewe kama baba yangu His father in every way Yeye ni baba katika namna In every way he is the father katika namna mbalimbali yeye ni baba. He is full of compassion. Amejaa huruma. You can sit in the book of Luke chapter 7 verse 13 and 14. Katika Luka sura ya 7 verse 13 and 14. Mstari wa 13 na 14. But also the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 36. Mathayo 9 mstari wa 36. He cares for you. Anakujali. When he discovered that human being has sinned. Alipoona wanadamu tumetenda dhambi. He decided to save. And he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is ready to give out his life for others. When you read in the book of Psalms chapter 103 verse 8. 103 verse 8. The Bible says he is merciful and full of grace. Amejaa huruma neema huruma na neema. He is merciful and full of grace. Huruma na neema. He is rich in love. Ana utajiri katika upendo. And slow in anger. Si mwepesi wa hasira. He judges in a righteous way. Ana hukumu kwa haki. You may read it in the first book of Peter chapter 2 verse 23. First Peter chapter 2 Petro kwanza sura ya pili mstari wa 25. But also the first first John chapter 2 verse 29. 1 John chapter 2 verse 29 John sura ya kwanza wa John ya Yohana sura ya pili mstari wa 8 29 mstari wa 29 but also 1 John chapter 3 waraka wa kwanza wa Yohana sura ya 3 mstari wa verse 9 and 10 mstari wa 9 the bible says biblia inasema children of god cannot sin watoto wa Mungu hawatendi dhambi family if you don't want to sin you must become the children kama utaki kutenda dhambi na uwe mtoto wa Mungu you take him as the father unamchukulia kama baba yako and then you'll be unable to sin na hautatenda dhambi haleluya amen the bible says biblia inasema everyone who loves knows god 
kila mpendaye apendaye anamjua Mungu is born to know god amezaliwa kumjua Mungu in the first book of john chapter 4 verse 7 kitabu cha kwanza cha yohana sura ya 4 mstari wa 7 family we are here to overcome the world tupo kushinda ulimwengu but you can all overcome lakini tunaweza kushinda if we depend on him kama tutamtegemea first john chapter 5 verse 4 Walaka wa kwanza Yohana sura ya 4. But also when you read in the first John chapter 5 verse 18. Ah, walaka wa kwanza wa Yohana sura ya 5 verse 18. Sura ya 5 mstari wa 18. We are becoming sinless when we have a father. Tunakuwa hatutendi dhambi tunapokuwa na baba. It will be so difficult for you to Itakuwa ni ngumu kwako kutenda dhambi. When every time you are in touch with the father. Unapokuwa na baba kila wakati I am telling you it will be difficult for you to see. Itakuwa ni ngumu kutenda dhambi. We must even receive Holy Spirit. Lazima tumpokee hata Roho Mtakatifu. As the the spirit of the Father. Kama roho wa Baba. You are speaking of Holy Spirit. Unaomwongelea Roho Mtakatifu. You are speaking of God the Father. Unaongelea unamwongelea Baba. Because the spirit of God the Father it is the Holy Spirit. Kwa sababu roho ya Baba ndio Roho Mtakatifu. So if we have received the Holy Spirit kwa we kama, have received the Father. Kama tumepokea Roho Mtakatifu maana yake tumempokea Baba. But we have received the Holy Spirit as the helping Father. Lakini tumempokea kama msaidizi wetu. The helping Father. Baba msaidizi. Mm-hmm. Father who helps. Baba akusaidiaye. You know sometimes when you hear he is our helper we think maybe he's like our assistant. He's not our assistant. Unajua tunaposikia kwamba ni msaidizi tunamchukulia kama Swahili language is not rich. <laughs> ni kweli. Hamna <laughs> maneno ya kuelezea mazee. Tunamchukulia kama mtu mdogo lakini ni maana yake ni msaada wa baba katika maisha. The one who can help you. Maana yake ni yeye anayekusaidia. So you are the one you need not him kwamba sisi ndo tunayemhitaji sio yeye. Roho mtakatifu njoo njoo. We must be very serious with him. Ni lazima tuwe makini na yeye. We must be very focusing on him and respect him too much. Lazima tu tunamsikiliza na kumtii. Because kwa sababu by respecting the spirit of the Lord we have respected the Father. Kwa kumtii yeye tunamtii Baba. Never underestimate him. Tusimshushe. I wish you could not miss. Natamani usikose. From Wednesday to Friday. Ara Jumatano mpaka Ijumaa. It was not in the timetable. Haikuwa kwenye ratiba. But I had the spirit of the Lord that I should teach. Lakini nasikia na ndani yangu that we should share. Kwamba tushiriki. There are things which the Lord will release them to us. Kuna vitu ambavyo Mungu atatuachilia. And then it will renew our spirit. Itaihuisha roho zetu. It will renew our relationship with God. Itaihuisha mahusiano yetu na Mungu. This coming month is our month of waiting for the Lord. Mwezi unaokuja ni mwezi wa sisi kutulia katika If you don't know how to wait for the Lord, how will you succeed waiting for him? Usipoweza kutulia katika Bwana, je, utawezaje? We will know how to differentiate from the voice of the Jesus uh, the voice of the Son, Father and the, and the Holy Spirit. Tutaweza kutofautisha sauli ya sauti ya Baba, ya Mwana na ya Roho Mtakatifu. You will wake up and see your angels. Utaamka na utaona malaika zako. You will control the, your angels. Utasema na malaika zako. When David is saying goodness and mercy shall follow me. Daudi aliposema kwamba goodness and mercy fadhili zitanifuata. Shall follow me. So it is very poor language. Shall it means the the persons manake ni ni what ni goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life wema na fadhili zitanifuata siku zote za maisha yangu there is an angel in charge of goodness in your life manake kuna malaika ambaye there is an angel in charge of mercy in your life na fadhili there is an angel in charge of your provision katika maisha yako there are angels in charge of your children kuna malaika kwa ajili ya mahitaji yako malaika kwa ajili ya watoto wako there are angels just to watch you over na kuna malaika ambao wako kwa ajili ya kuangalia they don't talk hawafanyi chochote they just look at you wanakuangalia whatsoever you do they write wanacho unachofanya maybe during the three days i will tell you about the watchers also siku hizo nitakwambia so that you may understand you are not alone ili ujue kwamba hauko father is always with you When you have that mind that God is with me. Unapokuwa na huo ufahamu kwamba baba yuko pamoja na mimi. You will never sin. Hautatenda dhambi. I swear. You will never sin. Uwezo kasi. Every time you see him how how can you sin? Kila wakati unamuona unatendaje dhambi? 
For all we know that children of God they are those who walk in spirit. Kwa sababu watoto wa Mungu ni wale wanaotembea katika roho. And there is no something which there's no freshness in in them. Hakuna uchafu ndani yao. So just focus. Mwangalie Mungu. Sometimes we complain that we have not received anything. Sasa nyingine tunalalamika hatujapokea kitu. Because we can't see. Kwa sababu hatuoni. Can you imagine mama pastor close your eyes then I give you close your eyes and say Lord please give me phone. Close your eyes and say Lord give me phone. Lord give me phone. Kwa Kiswahili sema Mungu naomba naomba unipe simu. Mungu naomba unipe simu. Okay nyosha mkono kwa ajili simu. How can she see the phone? Because she's not able to see it. Many times God has released things for us. Sometimes we have chased away those people God has sent them for us. God give me husband. And then the devil will give you his fake as usual. Shetani lazima atakupa wakwake. But the one who comes from the Lord will not be seen the way you want. After entering your home after wedding. That is when you will discover he has all the attributes you have been looking for. But before you cannot know. Eh, I think I know I knew you but I never knew you. Nafikiri nilikuwa nakujua lakini nahisi kwa nakujua. Haleluya. Haleluya. So let us continue to depend on our Father. Kwa hiyo tuendelee kumtegemea Mungu. He the Father to the fatherless. Ni Baba kwa yatima. He said in the book of Psalms 68 verse 5. Zaburi 68 mstari wa 5. Family we may bow our heads for a word of prayer. Tuombe. As I was praying and waiting for the Lord also. Nilipokuwa nikiomba. The Lord gave me the counsel for us. Alinipa neno kwa ajili yetu. He said he gave us the counsel. Alinipa ushauri. He said this is the counsel of the Lord to this church. Akasema huu ni ushauri kwa kanisa. Remove away all of your pride. Ondoa kiburi chako. Remove away all of your filthy. Ondoa uchafu wote. From this altar I will control the nation and nations. Kutoka kwenye madhaba hui nitaongea na mataifa. No one can understand or ever imagine what I have kept for you in these last days. Hakuna ambaye anaweza kujua wala kufahamu vile nilivyoweka kwa ajili ya siku zizi za mwisho. It is from this altar people will hear and see. Ni kutoka hapa watu watasikia na kuona. Things which eyes have not seen. Vitu ambavyo macho hayajaona. Ears have not heard. Masikio hayajasikia. But I have kept them for those who loves me. Lakini nimeweka kwa ajili ya wale wanaonipenda. It will be this place. Itakuwa mahali hapa. Because I've chosen this place Kwa to sabi. be my Mount Horeb. Kwa sababu nimechagua mahali hapa pawe mlima Horeb. As it was in the book of Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Kama ilivyokuwa kwa Malaki sura ya 4 verse 1. But also in the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Na kama kutoka sura ya 3 mstari wa 4. Also Exodus chapter 3 verse 5. Pia kutoka sura ya 3 mstari wa 5. This is my holy ground. Oh. This is my holy ground. This is my holy ground. He said this is my holy ground. He said this is my holy ground. Come on Agren, come here. The Lord said this is my holy ground. Amesema huu ni uwanja wangu mtakatifu. Ambao nimeuchagua kwa ajili ya kutembea kwenye hii nchi. Huu ni uwanja wangu mtakatifu ambao nimechagua kutembea katika. Whatsoever will be decreed from here. Chochote kitakachosemwa mahali hapa. It will be the decree of the spiritual realm of heaven. Itakuwa ni maamuzi kutoka mbinguni. People and nations will gather to eat the fruits of life from heaven throne. 
watu wa mataifa watakusanyika mahali hapa kula matunda ya nchi They will eat the fruit of life from heaven throne here. People and nations watu na mataifa will gather to eat the fruit of life from heaven throne. Watu wa mataifa watakusanyika mahali hapa kula matunda kutoka kiti cha mbinguni. From here I will teach and from here I will punish. Kutoka hapa nitafundisha na nitaadhibu. From here I will teach and from this altar I will punish. And from here I will encourage. Kutoka kwenye madhabahu hii nitafundisha, nitahukumu na nitaadhibu. Walk into my ways. Tembea katika njia zangu. Because you are my chosen ones. Kwa sababu ni mwachagua. Do what I have commanded thee. Through my servants who have been standing here and will continue to come to stand here behold I am going to do a new thing my spirit will be poured to you in a mighty way and you will all be my witnesses all over remember I am with everyone here adultery and filthiness should not be part of you be clean for you are highly favored in this holy ground enemy has been sent to destroy pastor's family But he has failed for it is me you are Lord the shield. Shetani amekuwa kijaribu kwa kuharibu nyumba ya mchungaji lakini ni mimi ndiye ambaye nimekuwa kilinda. For me that's a counsel from the Lord. Ila ndio neno la Bwana. Amen. That's a counsel from the Lord. Ila ndio neno la Bwana. That's a counsel from the Lord. We must adhere on him. We must be ready to expect from him him for bigger things. Many times we have lost because we are not able to see. Wakati mwingi tumepoteza kwa sababu hatuoni. Lord give us grace. Mungu atupe neema. To see from spiritual realm. Kuona katika ulimwengu wa roho. To see from spiritual realm already. Kuona katika ulimwengu wa roho. Let our ears be opened. Masikio yetu yafunguliwe. And our eyes be opened the Lord. Masikio yetu yafunguliwe. So that we may be your witnesses in these last days. Ili tuwe mashahidi wako. Thank you Lord Jesus. Asante Yesu. Because you have seen us. Kwa sababu umetuona. You have seen us Lord. Umetuona. You have seen us. Umetuona. Thank you for your cleaning because you are even cleaning us now. Asante hata kwa kutusafisha kwa maana unatusafisha sasa. Come on somebody repent before the Lord now. Just repent wherever you are, you are seated. Just repent before him now. Thank him and repent. Thank him and repent. God has planned for you to hear this message as you are hearing now. It was not the message for everyone. It was not the message for everyone. There are people who started well. But to surprise they want to finish in a bad way. Mind your ways. That's the speech of the Lord. Watch your ways. You started well. But devil want you to finish in a bad way. Mm -mm. I want you to live longer. Don't cause me to call you back home now. Sitaki nikuite nyumbani sasa. Because you have a work to do. But there are people who are forcing me to call them back. Focus. Walk in holiness. Never compromise with sin. Never compromise sin. For I am holy. I am holy. Come on, repent somebody now. You can repent for your children. 
You can repent for your husband. You can repent for your parents. You are the one to intercede for them. You are the one to intercede for them. Because it was at Mount Horeb. Whereby the Lord you said. You told thy servant Moses to put off his shoes. Because it was the holy ground. Lord we are repenting. Father we repent. We are repenting. I repent as the pastor. I repent as the father. I am supposed to be a father who will draw people to you Lord. Not to me. Not to me Lord. Not to create my kingdom but your kingdom Lord. Your kingdom Lord. I repent for my wife. I repent for my children. Both physical and spiritual. In the name of Jesus. Forgive us Lord. Forgive us Lord. Cleanse us O Lord. Release your blood O Lord. Yes Lord. Yes Lord. Every plan of the enemy. I declare it destroyed in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your children shall live. Your children shall live. Your children shall live. Your children shall walk in holiness. Your children shall depend on you. Your children will know you are their father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. Because from this altar. You have said you speak to the nation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. Asante baba. We are even praying for the nation of Uruguay right now. Tunaomba hata kwa ajili ya taifa la Uruguay. Come on somebody pray for Uruguay right now. Ombea Uruguay sasa. Pray for Uruguay right now. Ombea Uruguay sasa. Pray for the country called Uruguay right now. Ombea nchi inaitwa Uruguay sasa. Rada mshikiri. Oh we pray for Uruguay now. Dere da shirika usitere kororosa. God intervention. Intervention oh Lord. Intervention Lord. Intervention Lord. Intervention Lord. Intervention Lord. Intervention Lord. We know it has been decided. Tunajua imetangazwa. Kidishirisate. We also repent to Lord for our president and the leaders of this nation. And we are praying for him. And the government of Lord. In the name of Jesus. We are repenting for the church of Tanzania. We have lost the focus. We have lost the focus. Second chance oh Lord. We pray for the second chance oh Lord. To anyone from this country. Who is against your will. As you have wrestled right now. Oh God. As you are vessel right now. Kama mtumishi wako. I speak judgment. Hukumu. Judgment. Ninatamka hukumu. To whoever is stopping your will in this nation. Kwa yoyote anayeharibu mpango wako kwa ajili ya taifa hili. Judgment. Hukumu. Judgment. Hukumu. I see people falling in altars. Ninaona watu wakianguka katika madhabahu. It will be a shock. It will be a shock. Big people will die. Because judgment has been declared. People will think maybe it was BP. But it's God's judgment have been passed. Oh ye Tanzania. If you could know. Your time of visitation. 
your time of visitation oh my Tanzania if you could know your time of visitation you could have repented you could have repented but it has been decided it has been decided it has been decided that the church should be cleaned the church should be cleaned those people from church who have been depending on witches judgment on them now I am sending the priest of Tanzania right now the angel in charge of Tanzania Malaika wa Tanzania judgment on them who are doing witchcraft on the altars I am sending angels to the altars of Tanzania clean them ninatuma malaika wa Tanzania wakasafishe madhabao it will be massive itakuwa kubwa it will be massive because it has been decided the church must be cleaned time is over judgment is now on them watch and hear behold I will do a new thing in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus yes Lord thank you Lord thank you precious Lord yes Lord we give you all the glory you are the Alpha and Omega we worship you alone you are worthy to be praised Biche, as i was praying nilipokuwa nikiomba just before the Lord to speak his counsel for the church he just said a simple message for you it may be a simple message it may be a small message but he said that Bite should keep on trusting and focusing on me because it's it's your season now he said you should keep on trusting and focusing on because it is your season it is your season it was until Samuel was sent in the house of Jesse Samuel was sent in the house of Jesse Samuel alipotumwa katika nyumba ya Yesu. And he anointed. Na kumpaka mafuta. David. David. Declaring that it was his season. Na kutamka kwamba ilikuwa ni wakati wake. It did not start all over. Haikuanza tu. In the physical realm. Katika mwili. But it started from that day. Ilianzia siku ile. After when he anointed the servant of God David. Alipopaka mafuta. Man of God said I will not sit until you bring that person who is a frog keeper. Akasema mtumishi wa Mungu akasema sitakaa mpaka utamleta yule ukamkamleta yule mtu. And I will not sit today bitte. Na sitakaa leo bitte. Until mpaka when I have anointed you. Nakapokupaka mafu. Declaring the new season. Nikatangaza I am sending as the authorized mouth of God now. Kama mtumishi wa Mungu. A lot has been said to you. Mengi yamesemwa kwako. A lot has been happening. Mengi yamefanyika. You have got a lot of promises from the Lord. Umepata ahadi nyingi za Mungu. 
But I can tell you this is your season. And this is your day. And if I be the servant of God right now I declare that new season. I declare that new season for you. And I declare shift from wherever they robbed you. In the name of Jesus. It is not who you are. And people they are taking you in a different way because of your situation. But I can tell you today those people who are despising you today they are the ones who will cherish you right on. God has chosen you for such a time as this in the mighty name of Jesus. Father I thank you for your servant. I don't know how you are going to do I don't know how you're going to do. I But I know it is your it is her time. Receive in the name of Jesus. Power of the Holy Ghost. Now. Sasa. Now. Sasa. Like never before. Like never before. Zaidi ya mwanzo. And let the spirit of God be upon you now. Na roho ya Mungu ikae juu yako sasa. Let your eyes be opened. You have been crying alone. You have been crying alone. Thinking that your life was better before you were saved. Thinking that you could do those things of the past now. It was like an enemy was laughing at you. Now you are born again. Where is it now? Where is it now you are born again? You are enjoying life before. Where is it now? Where is it now? Where is it? That's what the devil has been speaking to you. You have been crying and crying alone. Sometimes you laugh before the people, but inside you are hurted, you are injured. I release that power to you. Give your hand right now. Give your hand right now. Father, I lose your glory to her. I lose your glory to her. I lose your glory to her, Lord. I lose your glory. Take it in the name of Jesus. Take it again. Again and again. Seven times. Stand up. As you're standing up now, you'll never be down again. You'll never be down again. In the name of Jesus. Receive. Okay. 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 Everything that was a challenge is cancelling it. Now. Now okay, sir. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Amen. Pigi ya bana yesu makofu. Hey, you are worthy to be praised. You are the I thank you and I glorify you. Thank you for such a time as this. Father, I pray for the sanctification of your children. I also pray for the cherubims and seraphims into this place, O oh Lord. Release them to us, Lord. Release them for us, O oh Lord. For the cleansing. And for your glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the angel in charge of this place. 
and for the angels who are in this place, O oh Lord. Thank you for using your servant, O oh Lord. Receive all of the glory. Receive everything, Lord. You don't share glory. You have just used me as your vessel alone. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Thank you, precious Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. We'll go quickly. That day when Jesus was taken, he took the bread and he blessed and he said this is my body eat and then afterwards he took the cup and he blessed and he said this is my blood for the cleanliness of, of their sin do it for my remembrance it started all over from the book from the book of Genesis it was Abraham who wanted to sacrifice his own son but the Lord said O ye Abraham I have known that you have not denied me you have not denied me your son now I am giving you my lamb slaughter this lamb and offer it it was the first scenario when we saw the first lamb was being given as offering. It was the picture of Jesus being offered there. And then it went all over in the book of Exodus chapter 24. Verse 7 to 10. Moses talked to the Israelites. Moses talked to the Israelites about the blood of Jesus and children of Israel said oh we will do it according to what you have said and then he took the blood of the lamb and he shed upon them and the Bible said after he did that all children of Israel they saw God so after drinking the blood of Jesus today and eating his body today we will see God but we are also as we are going to drink the blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus today all other covenants that we have ever entered it is going to be broken today covenant is being broken by a larger covenant we don't break covenant by prayer covenant is being broken by larger covenant sometimes we enter into hotels we just eat sometimes we buy cashew nuts we just eat on the way but we don't know that people have done some witchcraft in those foods it is until when you use the blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus it cleans all you have eaten before I can assure you today if there is any covenant inside you today if I be the man of God after taking the blood of Jesus from this non-alcohol wine and this blood of Jesus everything is going to be broken and you will start a new covenant with God today he said do it for my remembrance so today we are reminding God you died it's like he's feeling the pain now again he remembers that pain and then he come to cleanse us in the name of Jesus Father we thank you and we glorify you we change this non-alcohol wine to be the blood of Jesus and we also change this blood to be the blood of Jesus 
Say Father in the name of Jesus. Baba katika jina la Yesu. Everyone say Father in the name of Jesus. Baba katika jina la Yesu. I enter in the spiritual realm. Naingia katika ulimwengu wa roho. Right now. Sasa. I change this blood. Nisha umwi. To be the body of Jesus. Kwa mwili huu. And I change this non alcohol wine to be the blood of Jesus as I am going to partake right now every covenant every covenant that I have ever entered knowing and unknowing let it be broken down Amen come on Right now sasa every covenant kila agano every covenant kila agano that i have ever entered bado ni mawe kuingia knowing and unknowing kwa kujua kwa kutokujua let it be broken down na nifunjwe sasa amen Our dear Lord Jesus when he was checking at that night he took the bread he took the bread and he disputed and he said eat we have already changed this bread to be the body of Jesus eat this is the body of Jesus Father, I thank you for the bread for the bread which is now the body of Jesus. Baba ninakushukuru kwa ajili ya mkate ambao ni mwili wa damu ya Yesu. And now I thank you for this nana called wine. Sasa ninashukuru kwa ajili ya huu mvinyo sio na kirefu. Which we have changed it to be the blood of Jesus. Ambao tumeubadilisha kuwa damu ya Yesu. At that night which we, you were taken. Usiku ule ulichukua. You give it to your disciples. Uliwapa wanafunzi wako. And you said drink. Na ukasema kunyweni. This is my blood. Hii ni damu yangu. Do it for my remembrance. Fanya hivi kwa ukumbusho. And you said whoever that is not going to drink your blood now and eat your body. Na ukasema yote ambaye hawezi kunywa damu ya Yesu na kula mkate. Will not have fellowship with you. Hawezi kuwa na mahusiano na wewe. Will not have fellowship with you. Hawezi kuwa na shirika na wewe. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. Thank you because today you are creating fellowship with them Lord. Asante kwa sababu leo unaweka ushirika na wewe. In Jesus my name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen.
I want us to I want us to pray a simple prayer a very simple prayer put, put one hand to your tummy and another hand to your head right now say father in the name of Jesus whatsoever that I have eaten either in the dream or in the physical which is of the enemy poisonous or something which is of the enemy let it come out Kitoke sasa. Kwa jina Yesu. Kwa jina la Yesu. I release fire. Naachilia moto. As the blood of Jesus inside me now. Kama vile ambavyo damu ya Yesu iko ndani yangu sasa. Whatsoever that is from the devil side. Chochote kile ambacho kiko upande wa shetani. Let it come out now. Kitoke nje saa hii. I receive fire. Na pokea moto. From heaven. Kutoka mbinguni. Right now. Saa hii. Continue to pray as you have closed your eyes now. Endelea kuomba ukiwa umefumba. Father I release fire. Baba naachilia moto in the stomach right now katika tumbo whatsoever they have eaten that is not from you lord let it come out now let it come out now come out now i declare it broken in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu receive it now kwa jina yesu power of the holy ghost moto wa damu ya yesu now sahi now sahi i break those covenants ninavunjayo maagano i break those covenants now ninavunjayo maagano sasa i break those covenants now ninavunjayo maagano sasa deadly covenants now ninavunjayo maagano sasa right now sahi say father sema baba i vomit nina tapika i vomit nina tapika whatsoever i ate from enemy kutoka kwa i vomit it now let it come out let it come out kitoke nje sasa in jesus name kwa jina la yesu let it come out kitoke nje sasa let it come out kitoke nje sasa let it lose its power let it lose its power kipoteze nguvu zake sasa in jesus my name kwa jina la yesu in jesus my name thank you jesus asante bwana yesu Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you're standing up. Kama tulivyosimama. Let us pray for the food. Tunaombea chakula chetu. Father, we thank you for food which we are about to eat right now. Baba, tunashukuru kwa ajili ya chakula ambacho kipo We purify by the blood of Jesus. Tunakitakasa kwa damu ya Yesu. We turn it to be the blood of Jesus. Tunabadilisha kuwa mwili na damu ya Yesu. And the drinks which we are going to have. Na kile chochote ambacho tunaenda kuwa nacho. The drink which we are going to have. Let it be the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your children now. Baba, tunaomba kwa ajili ya watoto. I am sending angels to go ahead of them. Natuma malaika waende mbele yao sasa. In the name of Jesus. Kwa jina la Yesu. I am praying for everybody protection of Lord. Naomba kwa ajili ya ulinzi wa kila mmoja. I declare I declare good news to them. Na tamka habari njema kwao. Whatsoever that was a challenge to them. Kile chochote ambacho kilikuwa changamoto kwao. It will no longer be a challenge. Kitakuwa changamoto tena. I declare good news. Nina tamka habari njema. As they continue to rest in this month of rest. Kama vile ambao wanaendelea kupumzika katika mwezi wa In the mighty name of Jesus. You will be located something which they could not do for the past 10 years. For the past 20 years. Let them do in one year from today. In the name of Jesus. Let those who don't doesn't have employment to receive now. Business to receive now. Expansion of their business. Expansion of their present works. In the name of Jesus. I bless their studies. Even for those who are studying alone. I pray for those who have applied for university. To receive in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. May the glory of God cover you. 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 I am sending goodness and mercy angel to go ahead of you. Malaika wa habari njema waje juu yako. In the name of Jesus. Angel Gabriel and Angel Michael to go ahead of you. Natuma angel Gabriel and Malaika Michael and Malaika Gabriel waje juu yako. To go ahead of you. Waje mbele yako. In the name of Jesus. Come on go and succeed. 
Nenda ukafanikiwe. Go and prosper. Nenda ukawe. Whatsoever you are going to touch. Chochote unachoenda kukishika. It will be like God himself has touched it. Itakuwa kama Mungu mwenyewe. Everything you are going to touch is blessed. I turn your legs to be the legs of Jesus. Ninabadilisha miguu yako na mikono yako kuwa mikono na miguu ya Yesu. When whatsoever you are going to land. Chochote kile ambacho unaenda kukishika. In the name of Jesus. It is going to be blessed. In Jesus my name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.